Clearly, the voice is there, but that's not always enough. You've got to be all in. You know, for me, the only option was was no options. You know what I mean? So I didn't have a plan. I didn't, I didn't have a plan B. Music, as we know, can be a really tough business. So you better have a good reason why. You know, this is about preserving something that's way bigger than me doing it effortlessly because I enjoy it. He makes beautiful, meaningful music for what he views as a beautiful world. The world is always in constant need of healing, but also there, there are things too that are gentle reminders constantly that the world is still a beautiful place. Smooth vocalist Raheem Devon on The Pulse. You put something on me. So you know what we do every Monday? Talking to all the folks, doing cool things. They're on tour, they're making music, they're making a difference, they're using their voice for good. And today we have one of those people, a multiple Grammy nominee. He's dabbling in and getting into the acting. Uh, he's been selling records for years. Has another one out like just now, like just a minute ago. Crooner. We call you that the king, right? Raheem Devon joins us. How are you? Peace, man. How are you? Good morning. It's interesting how you even got started. So take us back. You come from a musical family. Yeah, I do. My my my, uh, my father, uh, late great uh, cellist Abdul Wadu. Uh, in fact, he just we just released an album um, of his, his his only solo album, which came out in seventy seventy. Oh man, in the set I was two years. Was it seventy seven? <laughs> okay. Officially. It's a re-release of, of the album on vinyl, and it's available everywhere digitally. It's called By Myself. That just dropped on his birthday, uh, April 30th. So, uh, yeah, you know, definitely dad, you know, having the musical influence and, and me following his footsteps. And so because of that, growing up in the business and seeing your father, the, you got into this at a, at a pretty young age. They're saying when you were just a child, you knew you wanted to do music always been curious about music and different and fascinated with certain artists like Bob Marley and, you know, Marvin Gaye, uh, Prince, uh, just to name a few, you know, uh, who all had huge influences over my career, you know, not just on the, on the, on the side of making like intimate music and love songs, records that speak to intimacy, but also, you know, from a socially uh, conscious being socially aware uh, standpoint as well. When did you know, that you wanted to do it yourself? I think I knew back then, you know, I think it was the, the real question was how to figure out connecting the dots to, you know, to see it manifest. And, you know, as I got older, I really, it was something I really pursued and, and took very seriously. And, um, you know, back in the early 2000s is when it, when it, when it really started, to, the doors started to really open up for me. Um, you know, I started to kick the doors open. I, I'd rather say, you know, uh, you know, being part of two different, uh, groups locally here in the Washington D.C. area, Urban at 31 and the Crossroads, and then and, you know morphing into becoming a solo artist. And you know, back in 2002, I did my first deal with Job Records, and uh, the first album, The Love Experience, my solo project, came out in 2005, and it, it's really been you know moving at the speed of light since then. It sounds like you've always been that person. Once you decided to do it you kind of took ownership of it. You did whatever you had to do. And I guess I'm trying to dig for people who want to be inspired by your story. You just refused to not succeed, kicking down doors, doing independent stuff, whatever it took. You know, for me, the only option was, was no options. You know what I mean? So I didn't have a plan. I didn't, I didn't have a plan B or plan C, you know? Uh, I, 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 I was dead set on, you know, this is something I want to do. This is something that not not only that I want to do, that I'm going to do, you know. And I think it takes a different type of uh, discipline and um, faith system. Um, you know, it, it takes it takes knowing who you are and knowing what you want to do versus believing it. And it, it, I, I, sometimes you 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 ask yourself the why as well. You know, I think that's really important. Um, you know, that's where things like, you know, morals and integrity and things of that nature come into play. You know, the why is very important, too. 
What was your why? Simply the passion of something that I love to do. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you when, when you love it, it's, it's not really considered work, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there may be stressful times. Um, you know, I do believe there's, there's, there's a such thing as like good stress. You know, we get, where, where you can where you, you, you challenge yourself to greatness. You set new goals for yourself. You know, you, you there's always going to be obstacles and you navigate around it. And you, you got to also be able to adapt to, to whatever, you know, comes your way. So you went through the process. You did the underground scene in Washington, D.C. I read about you at working at Tower Records or something like that. So doing the work, when did it become, okay, I'm putting in the time, I'm putting in the grind. People are now starting to realize that I actually want to have a career in this. You know, even when I was working at Tower Records, you know, uh, I had independent music out at the time, uh, you know, that I would like kind of direct people to and they would say like, hey, let's do this out. I was like, oh, I, well, you, hey, you need to check out this this group, Urban App 31, uh, which I happen to be part of, you know, so, uh, you know, definitely having multiple hustles and then and then it's really take you know getting to a point where i jumped off the porch and just decided that this is something i'm gonna do you know full time and at time being the starving artist you know uh shout out to genuine and um uh, you know my previous managers cliff and jerry vines uh cliff jones and jerry vines who were very instrumental in um making it possible for me to go out on the road with genuine as a, as a background singer, you know? So that was my first introduction to, to the, to the industry and being able to, to, you know, move around, move around the world, um, you know, at the height of genuine's career, you know, and, um, and to be a fly on the wall and see the things that he had to deal with day in day out as a, you know, just mega recording, you know, just the superstar artist, R and B artist, you know, um, so, you know, that's kind of like boot camp for me as well. And you talked about the days at Tower and touring and Genuine and kind of putting in, uh, putting in the work. Have you seen the industry change? Because it seems oh, like you don't have to do it like that anymore. Yeah, I mean, you do, you do, you know. It definitely it's about working, you know, smarter, not harder through the process of it and the trial and error of it. But there's still, you know, there's, 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 a lot of work to be done. You know, I've always moved by the philosophy that you're as great as the last record that you record. You know, you're great as your last performance, TV performance. We have, you know, all these things are very important uh, to the existence of uh, not only myself as an artist, but to the culture. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about preserving the culture of R&B, preserving the culture of soul music, preserving, you know, we're, on a, we're at the 50-year mark of hip-hop, which has played a huge influence on on. on on culture um, as a whole, including R and B and soul music, I know it has I know it's played a major um, role for me. You know, as as an artist, you know, in the way that I deliver it. You know, this is about preserving something that's way bigger than me, and just in, in, in real time doing it effortlessly because I enjoy it, and I've you know, and over a period of time, I've become a master of the craft of it. Coming up next, it's been a successful, diverse career, but what's most important to him? What do you want people to know you for? Oh uh, man, I want to be known as that Renaissance R&B soul artist, you know, uh, the blueprint for a lot of different things. You gotta sacrifice every day. Your music makes it clear that the message and the things that you are doing, this matters to you. Like you, you've had and experienced commercial success and continue to have commercial success. But am I wrong in saying that that doesn't sound like it was the thing that ultimately was was driving you? I think it's, it's about the authenticity of it, you know what I'm saying? Just being authentic. And, you know, when it's authentic, it cuts through when it's not, you know, something that is contrived, you can it usually unveils itself. I, I do have a formula to what I do, but I don't go in the studio with the tension of saying like, I'm going to make a radio record. You know what I mean? We've had a lot of people, uh, Kenny Lattimore was on, Jazzy Jeff was here not too long ago. And they all tell stories about at some point in their career, somebody tried to just overhaul them to push them towards commercial success. That doesn't mm -hmm. sound like that would have worked with you. Like you've got a formula, you've got a plan. I'm going to do what I believe in and I'm passionate in. But did the industry try to change you? I think I think 
whatever the profession it, it, it you know that you're embarking on it's important to you know um stay solid solidly rooted in you know your spirituality you know your morals and and being honest with yourself in terms of what you want out of it you know understanding that you know in this game or any game in the game of life in order to have some things you never had you got to do some things you never done what are you willing to do you know what sacrifices are you willing to make but um it really boils down to the fact that we all have a special gift and being able to identify what that gift is early you know if you're a parent you know being able to identify that gift in your child and and, and being supportive of, of, of them um you know in that manner and um and you know and then utilizing the tools that you pick up along the way to uh to maintain these things or you know again when you hit forks in the road and challenges to navigate around them how how do you define yourself I mean, obviously you're a performer. We talked about the different king. You've used your voice as an activist and your music as an activist. You're doing some of uh, the acting as well. What do you want people to know you for? Oh man, I want to be known as that Renaissance R&B soul artist, you know, uh, the blueprint for a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, I could, again, in the words of like Jazzy Jeff, who's a, who's a close friend and also a mentor, what he is, you know, um, it, I've, I've learned that, you know, people's perception of you matters, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he's kind of calling me as a blueprint for a lot okay. as well. Yeah, you know, um, um, but also understanding that it's not, it's not about who always does it first. It's about who does it best, you know? Okay. So at this point, at this point it's about doing, you know, giving, doing, it, doing the best and giving my all and, you know, and, and, and challenging myself, you know? Coming up, Raheem Devon talks about his new music using unique songwriter terms. This, this steamy, grown, mannish, euphoric, uh, <laughs> definitely bound to, 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 to set the mood for you. gotten involved with get out the vote initiatives you've gotten involved with activism we're going to talk about your nonprofit. Uh, why is it so important that you're using your voice in that way as well uh you know i i started the love life foundation um some time ago a few years back after you know receiving the key to the city a proclamation in my name um actually on my birthday raheem devon day's coming up ironically uh my birthday is you know this Friday, May 5th, and at the time, you know, receiving that accolade so early in my career, um, I wouldn't say that I necessarily felt like it was prematurely given to me, but I would, but I, but, but, but it, I challenged myself to say, okay, you know, um, for a city that's given me so much and given me so much love and support, you know, um, and a world, you know, really that's just, you know, that has supported me globally as an artist, like, you know what? What am I going to give back? How how do I pour back into those that have poured back into me? We've done a, a multitude of things, you know, to date, um, from you know advocating and, and fighting and bringing more awareness to domestic violence uh, amongst teens, and um, you know, just in that workspace in that sector as a whole to fight to fight that. Um, you know, feeding the homeless and those that are displaced. Uh, a textbook scholarship fund. We, we sent multiple students off to college for the first year mm. of college. You know, supporting them uh, with books and supplies. Something that's so, that, that might seem so simple and minute that um, you know a lot of students have a hard time. You know, getting their hands on for the first year of college. Um, we we now have you know students who we helped you know four, five, six, seven years ago that are now you know active and doing wonderful things. Um, but yeah, it, you know, even down to like, you know, over the holidays and the Christmas holidays and whatnot, it's kind of lightening the load for families in need. Uh, you know, we, we would do what's called the uh, holiday, annual holiday charity concert, uh, where I bring in various artists to perform 
and stuff of that nature. So it is it's, 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 it definitely you know being at being being part of community gives me another hat to wear, other than just being the guy that you see this you know wowing the ladies or <laughs> on stage. City and, that, and, and all that good stuff. You, know? you had to slide that in, right? The guy who was, I, I mean, I am wowing the lady. Just like, let's not forget. <laughs> oh, bring it, oh, oh, bring it, bring it, bringing people together too. <laughs> okay. We will take it. In a lot of ways, though, you talk about the blueprint, and Jazzy Jeff talked about the blueprint. Blueprint as an artist, but it also sounds like you own that kind of blueprint as community. Like, do we need to see more people who have ascended to that level and have a platform use it to make our communities better? I, I, absolutely, I think, and I, but I, but I, but I will say this: there's a lot of people out there doing the work. So you know, doing the work is doing the work, and just being a light bearer um, and a servant. You know, which we're all here to be, and not so much the, for the pat on the back or the accolade. You know, it's making sure we just we're doing it for the right reasons. You know, social media society yeah. has changed that, and people forget that you can do the right thing without then putting it on your Instagram page. Like everything yeah. isn't about. Hey, look at me. I helped that person. You can still help them. I, absolutely. You got more new music that is out. Yeah. So, so what are we looking at now, like over the last couple of weeks to month? I have an EP dropping this summer uh, titled The Summer of Love. If I had to describe um, The Summer of Love, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think, I think the world could use a lot of love. You know, uh, it's definitely an a EP. This the steamy grown man is euphoric. Uh, <laughs> definitely bound to to, to 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 set the mood for you, you know, uh, for the for the, for the summer. I'm now going to be looking for my opportunity to describe myself as steamy grown manish. Like I I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to figure out a way to slide that in there. But at some point, some conversation. I'm gonna casually drop steamy grown manners to describe myself like you just did. Steamy grown manners show, and I'm giving you adult talk. See? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, why being called the love king, it isn't just about intimacy. When they call me the love king, it's not just speaking to, to intimacy, right? It's, it's really just being, you know, being a light bearer for love and connecting people. You're also on tour, like pretty much always. So we'll get the dates yeah. up. People can see you all over the place. Yeah, continuously touring artists. Um, definitely, you know, look to the social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, what have you, too. You know, to check out where I'll be and, where, and, and, and you know, what we have going on this summer. Definitely, we're in the summer. We're, we're right now, we're in the leg of the summer of love leg, you know, and get ready for fall and the winter, winter of love as well. And, um, yeah, man, you know, again, When they when they call me the love king, it's not just speaking to, to intimacy, right? It's it's really just being, you know, being a light bearer for love and connecting people and connecting with my people and um, you know, reminding people why we do this, you know. We end every show, half an hour goes so quickly. We end every show on the pulse with the concept of use your voice for good. So when you hear use your voice for good, what does that mean to you? Uh it means being the light. It means um um, being a voice for change, it means being being a voice for uh, for intimacy and bringing people together. Uh, you know, not just in the bedroom, uh, but in, you know, social gatherings are, are so are so much more. I think important to us now and matter so much more now. You know, uh, being being as though what we just experienced with the pandemic, um, the world is forever changed. The world is always in constant need of healing, right? But also there, there are things too that are gentle reminders, constantly that the world is still a beautiful place. And to, and to, and to just remind people, you know, um, every chance we get that the world is still uh, a beautiful place. Raheem Devon, I appreciate you coming on The Pulse, allowing us to share our joint steamy grown mannish conversation with people <laughs> across the country. <laughs> Thank you, man. I wish you continued success. We'll be checking out all the new music and check you out on tour. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Right. Peace and love. 
guys, thank you so much for watching The Pulse today with Soul Crooner, steamy grown manish Raheem Devon. I'm telling you, I'm going to incorporate that into my day-to-day -day conversation. I appreciate him taking the time, sharing the information, his music, his life view. And I hope, as I often say, that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember that you can always hear the entire interview, all places where podcasts are available. Just hit subscribe and you will be able to check it out. And also head on over to YouTube and see some of the guests that you may have missed on The Pulse, some great shows. We hope that you will go check them out. And coming to Philadelphia Friday, May 19th for the Straight Jokes No Chaser Tour and on The Pulse next week, Cedric the Entertainer. When you do stand up, it's you, your audience, and your point of view, and you got to try to touch base with them human beings right there. It's just no more magical situation than that. Like, it's it's really powerful. It's almost like being a, pa a pastor, I think, like where your job is to come out and try to get somebody to laugh, like to, to let go of whatever it is that they've been dealing with. You, D.L. Hughley, Mike Epps. Uh, Young Fly, Earthquake. Right, we've done 30 cities. Uh, we come to Philly and we're doing arenas and it's fun, man. Me, Mike Epps, we all, we all partners and legends and different. So I feel like the audience gets a little bit of everything that they love. I leave you as I always do, reminding you that whenever you can, please use your voice for good and have a good one.